Hello, hello, and welcome to another Steel Division Division Overview. And today we're taking a look at the Guard Armour Division, which is pretty much the quintessential British Armour Division. Nothing really too crazy going on here. If you think what well, a British Armour Division should have, the Guard Armoured essentially have it. Fireflies, Cromwells, some weird looking vehicles that have been made in some shed in Yorkshire. You got them all here. So let's see how they actually look. So, economy rise, you got 80 points in A, 125 points in B, and 130 points in C. So, a rather good economy trend with the big uh, point boost coming in B. 36 activation points, which is pretty standard. And in terms of slot loadout, a lot of infantry, a lot of tank, and not much in terms of airplanes. Everything else is pretty standard. So, let's look at the units more in depth. Recon Rise, we got quite a lot of options. You got Reckeys in uh, really cheap, Scouts in Universe Carriers, and Reckeys in Humblers. Honestly, I'd say out of these three, the Humber is the better choice as having the vehicle is extremely useful as it's a nice little fire support vehicle to help your infantry. And also, they do have the Veteran G to boot. You also got Humber Mark IVs, which come with a 37mm cannon, which are pretty much making like a light stirrup essentially in the same sort of role of course you're gonna die very easy to auto cannons but you can fight against vehicles rather efficiently and speaking of fighting against vehicles efficiently in the recon tab you got aec mark III. this thing is ridiculous if it didn't have reels it would essentially be a tank because it's got the same gun as a sherman or cromwell roughly the same armor as he has more armor than the lower end cromwells and also, you know, got good speed and recon optics. It's a fantastic early on unit. Just due to the fact it's, it's essentially a tank of recon optics. And it's just extremely useful to have on the field because of that. More Rec A in B phase, but nothing really too crazy here. And more AECs in B and C. But by this time, they've kind of lost their magic touch. And I wouldn't really recommend the B or C phase cards. Infantry, it's pretty standard. Uh, British loadout, you've got rifles, where you got you have an A and B phase in quite a huge amount. Pretty regular, they're, they're similar to the 15th Scottish rifles. They have two SMGs, which makes them pretty good. The Vickers are pretty crap, as you already have a lot of half tracks in this stack, and well, you don't really need a Vickers when you already have M1919s on top of every vehicle that you have. Bren groups are, of course, Bren groups are not that great, but considering they're 10 points and they come with a 15 point half track, they're pretty good if you just want to get a half track and you just have to pay the extra 10 points for the Bren group. I mean, Bren groups are mediocre still, but you know, if you just want a cheap half track, this is a pretty good option. Motorized rifle leaders are going to be your main uh, leaders. You've got some rifle leaders later on in B phase, but pretty sound of snuff, nothing too crazy. And of course, motorized rifles, which is really the bread and butter of the infantry. Compared to regular rifles, they lose two guys, but they gain a Piat, which I think is definitely a rough road trade off as they give them much needed anti tank capability. And considering you're paying the same price to have some sort of AT weapon, I think that is a pretty good deal. I mean, they're still not that great when it comes to killing because it only has the Bren gun, but that's what half tracks are for. You got a lot of motorized rifles in A, in packs of four, in B phase, packs of six if I can find them, and C phase packs of eight, but with one star veteran chief. So a lot of motorized rifles, just more of this stuff in B phase. It's just a lot, and then the soap pioneers. They're okay, you can get some, which do come in Stuart Remy's, which are a lovely vehicle, but it's not really worth the card as Assault Pioneers are still pretty trash. So, it's pretty regular, infantry loadout, nothing crazy, no super veteran sheet here, it's really just down to rifles and motorized rifles in the end of the day. Tanks, we got a lot of options, and you get high numbers in terms of tanks. You're not going to be running out of tanks and guards armor, just for damn sure. In A phase, you got Sturge, pretty regular Sturge, nice thing at 80 points, so you can buy one per minute in A phase. And you get them in packs of five, making them very activation point efficient. You also got A phase Cromwell, a command version, A phase regular Cromwells, and a pack of three, which is a bit ridiculous, that's, that's a lot of Cromwells, as well as a Cromwell Mark 7, which is the same price as Cromwell Mark 5, but you can only get one compared to three per card, but it does have 11 
front llama, which makes it pretty impervious early on. It's mainly going to be facing Pack 38, which only has 10 AP, making it a damn good choice early on. B phase, you got more Chrono Mark 7s, but at its point, because at 120 points, you can buy one per minute. And then Sherman Mark 5s, which you can't buy one per minute, which is bit of the disadvantage yeah, there are five points more but still the shermans are slightly better because they pretty much have the 50 cal machine gun and you can get a lot of them in c phase 2 as well as command variants and then of course it wouldn't be a british armor division if we didn't have fireflies and oh boy we got fireflies times two in b phase times four in c phase and of course mr harris which really, he, he should have maybe one extra armor. I mean, he has a lot of heart, uh, tracks all over his uh, tank. It looks like he's been playing quite a bit of Raw Thunder. But the Fireflies are great. They're, they're really your uh, anti-heavy tank killers, essentially. They don't come with much veterancy. I mean, Harris is the only one that has one-star veterancy. Which is a bit of a disadvantage, but just because of the sheer numbers that you can get... It's uh, it's pretty good. Like I said before, you're not going to run out of tanks, especially when it comes to fireflies. Support, uh, pretty standard. Uh, we got Dingo was the name o, good old command vehicle for a cheap 30 points. Bed Fudge and A and B phase, and pretty good numbers. And of course, Cromwell long range anti tank gun killers. Pretty good stuff. Pretty standard. You get some in B phase too, but really A phase card is what you want to be aiming for. And Jan, we got. Everyone's favorite unit, the most effective support unit in the entire game, the SOD, the Super Ordnance Destructor, which I believe is an official acronym for it. But anyway, it has a Piat on a lightly armored vehicle, lightly armed, lightly armored vehicle. In actuality, you're pretty much just going to be using this the same as a dingo to keep back and just, you know, give that command aura bonus. It does have two star veterancy, which does make it a rather large command aura. And in terms of using the Piat, it does have extra accuracy compared to your regular Piat, uh, 6 compared to 8. And if you are going to be trying to use this as a tank killer, you shouldn't, unless you're trying to go for the mean machine, dream machine. But if you are, try to, you know, place it around corners and ambush enemy tanks. But it's going to be pretty hard when you only have 200 meter range. You also got crocodiles in T-Phase, which is a pretty nice unit. Uh, it's they're really kind of hit and miss. If you're fighting against more heavy armored tank division, which is panthers and pretty much panthers, they're not a good choice. Is you want to be getting fireflies to kill the panthers. But if you're playing against a more infantry focused, less heavy AT gun focused Axis division, the crocodile can be a great choice for breaking through enemy lines, and it has a cool name too, and a flamethrower, which are both pretty cool or hot in this case because of flamethrower anti-tank uh pretty standard you got piat's name b phase if you've got a lot of motorized rifles you don't need piat if you're going to go rifle spam you want to get piat you got six pounders and the choice of lloyd carrier or universal carrier pretty standard at gun nonsense b phase you got 17 pounders for either trucks or half tracks whatever you desire and then c phase you got the achilles which is pretty much your alternative option to getting fireflies the main thing is the achilles is 40 points cheaper has less armor but has a 50 cal as well as some veteran she you're going to be able to get both in your deck so it's not going to be like a huge dividing point but it's nice to have the at option if you just want a cheaper more focus at gun killer the achilles can be good the main flaw is that it can easily be artillery or more easy artillery than the firefly because it does have an open top and bombers rocket planes are going to stress you out much more quickly anti-air uh it's it's pretty boring looking we got postons which are regular postons they're crap crusader aas which are nice i mean it's 220 mils compared to 120 mil and on an armored vehicle highly recommend you got more Crusader AA Mark II's and B phase, and then of course Crusader AA Mark I with one cannon, yeah, being the 14 mm Bofors. So it's it's pretty standard stuff. You got 20s, you got 40s, but they come on armored vehicles, which is pretty nice. And both these vehicles make pretty good fire support vehicles too. If you just need that extra punch to deal with some Panzer Grenadiers or AT guns, etc. Artillery. Uh, it's it's pretty standard. There's there's nothing really crazy going on here. 
Two enter carriers, which are good for close range town fight, as they do have a machine gun essentially for mortar. You can get an A phase 25 pounder or an A phase sexton. If you have the option between sextons or 25 pounders, always, always, always take the sexton, as it pretty much can't get counter batteried unless it's like a really heavy uh, artillery gun that's hitting you. It's got double the ammo. Oh, yeah, over double the ammo. It's mobile. It also can. I mean, both can act as an anti tank gun, but the Saxon is a bit more efficient in that role. So get Saxons. You want to be getting a lot of Saxons. They're really going to be your main artillery piece in this division, I'd have to say. You got three inch mortars, pretty mare if you already got Saxons available. And then a sermon OP, which is pretty mare if you already got Saxons available. So it's Saxons for artillery, essentially. Lots of Saxons. Yeah? You got quite a lot of options when it comes to airplanes, and really good options too. You only have three slots to uh, play rounds with you, which does suck. Orsa, your regular recon plane, you can get an A phase Tempest, B phase Tempest in times two, and then C phase Tempest with two star veteran team times two, which is extremely card efficient. I'd have to say, considering that a lot of Axis tank divisions only have two star fighters in packs of run. That's, that's a really good deal here. And the Tempest is one of the best planes, I'd have to say, when it comes to fighters. Really good armament. Very fast. Good agility. It's solid. Absolutely solid. You got an A-Face Spitfire Bomber, which is pretty nice. You also got uh, Typhoon Bombers, too, which are also pretty nice. As well as some Typhoon ATs. You got Typhoon Rocket Planes. But really, the main ground attack plane you want to be taking note of is the two-star Typhoon AT in C phase. I wouldn't really recommend taking the regular ones, as the two-star veteran makes this thing rather deadly. I remember before the DLC, the, the second one that came out, yeah, there was this cool trick you could do with Typhoon ATs that if you put the rocket on hold, if you turn off the rocket and make him do the strafing run and turn on the rocket when you're only like 400, 200 meters from the target, which can be pretty hard to judge, mind you, the rocket will land pretty much dead on a tank and there's a much higher chance that you'll run hit kill a panther or a tiger or panzer four with a rocket run and just getting the stress out. It doesn't work as well anymore, but the Typhoon AT is imperative in stressing out those fat, heavy German cats, and it's very good at doing that. And with all the units, yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at a division or deck that I built earlier. Once again, deck code is in the description below. This is pretty much more general all-rounder deck. Feel free to make any changes, but yeah. So recon, we got uh, both cards of two two racky cards in Humbers. Pretty standard stuff. We got Humber Mark IVs, which are, um, you know, a nice option, as well as AEC Mark III in A phase. I'd always recommend taking this card in every guard armor deck, as it's just great. Infantry, a remarkable focus motorized rifles, as we got a total of 18 motorized rifles, which is a pretty good amount. Uh, rifles in A phase, motorized rifle leaders in A phase. So it's pretty much free pack. It's more than enough to get you through the first 10 minutes. More rifles and B just for some, you know, cheap spam, nothing too crazy. The brand groups for, you know, being able to get some cheap half tracks, but nothing too nutty here. Tanks, uh, we're taking the Stuarts in A phase. You always want to take Stuarts because five of them, one per minute, it's a match made in heaven. We're only going to be taking the Cromwell Mark 7. It does seem pretty tempting to take the Cromwell Mark 5. But the extra armor makes a huge difference, as this thing would die easily to pack 38s, yes or not. And that's going to be the main anti-tank threat you're going to be dealing with. And also considering you got the AEC, you got pretty much two medium tanks, as well as a bunch of light tanks in A phase. Which is more than enough to get you through. We're going to take a card of Cromwell Mark 7s in B phase over the Shermans, as we can buy one per minute, which I think is a pretty important aspect. Here we do take a card of command Shermans, just for some extra command units. And then pretty much uh, B phase Fireflies, Harris, and C phase Fireflies. So that's a total of seven Fireflies. Yeah, seven Fireflies, I can do math. Which is more than enough Fireflies. Support. We pretty much taken one of everything here. We got a dingo, a bedford, a Cromwell, the sword, because me machine. 
and the crocodile. Run of everything, it, it fits rather nicely, I have to say. I mean, you could take two dingoes if you want, but the extra command aura on the shot actually makes it a good purchase for an extra 10 points. Really, I, I, I swear. Anti-tank, basic, six pounders early on, just for some AT. 17 pounders in B phase. You're not going to need a lot of 17 pounders if you already have a lot of fireflies. I mean, yes, you can use them in ambush positions, but I find two more than enough to get through. And then a card of Achilles for some more heavy anti-tank. I mean, you could take, like, remove this firefly card and take another Achilles for the veterancy, but I don't really feel like I'd need four Achilles. And just having the extra fireflies for, you know, a bit more survivable is rather nice. Once again, it really comes down to preference. So you do have both options available in quantity. Antia, uh, Crusader A, Mark 2 and A, and then the Mark 1 and B and C phase. Nothing too crazy. Artillery, I like taking two inch carriers. I, I think a very underrated unit. Super useful in clearing towns. Uh, a phase section, because an A phase section is a great section, as you can just deal with every single threat. Well, every single static threat that Yaxus can bring up. And they can't really do much in A-Phase to counter a Saxon. And then B-Phase Saxons, because Saxons are great. I love Saxons. And Airplanes, uh, B card of B-Phase card of Tempest Fighters. C-Phase card of Tempest Fighters. Not taking the A-Phase run, which may seem a bit risky, as you're not going to have any A-Phase fighter coverage. But you're not really going to be dealing with that many planes to begin with in a phase against the axis so it's not really that big of a deal and just having two two star tempests and sea phase it's such a good deal and then our only ground attack plane being the typhoon at which is to hopefully kill panzer fours and panthers but even if it just suppresses the unit to stop it attacking yeah so it will allow a firefly or fireflies or achilles moving forward to get a kill that's more than enough in the end of the day so overall, the pros of this deck, you've got a solid economy. I mean, it's pretty good all around. You're not really struggling in points. And having 125 points in B phase is a real good kick to the war machine. Uh, tanks, tanks, and tanks. You, you just got lots of tanks. Like, just, just lots. You're not going to run out of tanks or armored vehicles. Even if you're doing a really poor job and you're losing them left, right, and center, you're still going to be able to pull tanks out of your sleeve. You have pretty good air power. Not much when it comes to you can only get three cards worth, but it's great. You got veterancy and you got a lovely selection of tempests and typhoons. You have good mobility in this deck in general. A lot of half tracks, a lot of rather mobile units. You can make some rather good breakthroughs and just envelop the map. And this is its division is very good at doing just. They got like a punch through, blitzkrieg breakthrough, and surround an enemy force if you get the chance to. And the shot, because the shot is the meme dream machine. Cons. There's really only two I could think of, and they both kind of fall into the same category. Is your infantry lack punch. You don't have panzer grenadiers or really anything that can kill, like infantry alone. Like the infantry units alone. You're going to have to rely on fire support, such as your overabundance of half tracks and artillery, to really be doing the killing when it comes to town fights, as your rifles and motorized rifles like to punch themselves throughout to do any goddamn damage. And your vehicles in general have rather low veterancy. You don't get any, like, two star crazy tanks going on here. And, like, most of your fireflies don't even have any veterancy, which means on one on one fights with tigers and pampers. <laughs> You're not going to be having a very good time. And pretty much what both these points come down to is you have to be good with fire support and keeping the enemy suppressed. Because you want to suppress the enemy tank so your unvetted fireflies have clear shots at killing them. And you want to suppress all the enemy infantry so your infantry can move up and get a surrender. And using suppression is such a vital part of the game in general but for this division in particular as you can really uh, exploit it to quite a means you can just use half tracks to rush up and surrender an enemy unit and you have a lot of fire support options available from Cromwell support to sextons sherman's Cromwell's, etc etc 
they're not going to be really running out of fire support. But I do want to hammer it home. Yeah, you want to be suppressing enemy units so your tanks and infantry, which aren't as good by themselves, can, you know, deal with the enemy. Especially if we're dealing with highly vetted Panzer Grenadiers, Fauchegas, Panthers, Tigers, etc. But nonetheless, without blabbering out the ray, let's see how Amberti handled the Guards Armor Division in a match. And we are back. And we are on show. Amberti is playing as the Guards Armor Division. And Turgan is playing as the Rindhound Division. So if we take a look at Amberti's deck, there's quite a few differences. The main one being he's going to more rifle spam instead of motorized rifles, which I'm not a big fan of personally. But you do get a lot of rifles, which make him fantastic in the spamming aspect. He'd take more Shermans, quite a lot more Shermans, for the spam aspect too. And uh, a lot of less artillery, a lot less AA, and no Achilles, relying entirely on Fireflies and 17-pounders. And also, his airplanes, he does take the A-Phase Tempest compared to the C-Phase cards of Tempest. But apart from that, nothing really too crazy. You're going to be using the same units, mainly per deck to deck for Guards Armoured. It's just about how many you want to take. And in this case, Alberti wants lots of rifles and lots of Shermans. That's his uh, name of the game. So, on show, is it a pretty good guard armoured map? As Firefly 17 pounders do lovely in open fields. But early on, it's going to be a bit tough, as Amberty is going to have to contest against Mortar Freeze. And he doesn't have any 1.2 kilometer AT weapons till B phase. So, this is going to be a rather tough nut to crack early on. It's going to be down to using the Sexton to battery it, the Cromwell support tank also to. Suppress it if it can, but that's a bit more risky. The town is going to be a much better choice for him. As it's much more close range and he can bring fire support on the field. As well as, you know, uh, Turgan doesn't get a lot of Pantagrandiers early, early on. Only a maximum of four. And they're pretty good crap in CQC. So a rifleman getting in close can do quite a bit of damage. And he's just going to be able to outnumber the town. So before we actually hit play, if we look at initial deployment, it's... Uh, Pretty passive overall, really. Nothing too crazy. Defending the southern side and really going to be trying to attack through the town. As early on is his best chance to attack the town. As there's not much infantry to contend with. In terms of armor, I mean, he's got 6 pounder on the flank here. The Humber going in. And the turret on the left hand side. But he's going to get in his rifles and motorized rifles into the town. As well as the dingo he had too. But nothing really too crazy against some rifles on the flank here. As well as some Ricky as well. They're already taking fire from that Mortar 3. And Turgon's also been pretty defensive. I mean, he is more of an aggressive A phase tank division. At the same time, it's a little bit harder to use those aggressive Panzer Freeze early on. It's going to be down to using Mortar Freeze on its map. We have our first engagement in the town. And it's going to be a long range fight against Panzer Grenadiers and rifles. But Amberty has a fire support. He's got half tracks. He's got Stuart. So he's going to be winning this. You know, it's a flam pancher coming in. And if he can get in close, that can do a lot of damage. And the Stuart is on the other side of the town. And he can't possibly see it. The motorized rifles can kill the flam pancher, of course. And I think that's the reason why this flam pancher hasn't just rust in really nilly. There we go. Good flame here. But Amberty microing out just in the nick of time. To avoid the fire. And see those motorized rifles. Even though you know only Piat are going to be keeping. You know Turgon from bringing in the vehicles. As you don't want to risk it. But a little bit risky. I'm moving in the motorized rifles. And with both of them pretty much pinned down. This is going to give Turgon the opportunity to attack. But the Stuart is now being brought in. To scare us off. And of course the Stuart at close range against. 232s and flam panzer is going to be great. Absolutely great. You know, panzer 3 is going to be a very tough customer. We've got another panzer 3 on the right hand side. And yeah, it's going to be moving up more towards the middle, which is definitely a good choice as it is more exposed. I mean, the 6 pounder doesn't have great line of sight, so he probably doesn't even know the 6 pounder exists. As he just says, his spar troop, or yeah, spar troop and half track over here. But the town is, of course, going titch up for him because we're in town, does not have a good infantry selection early on. 
And this is going to be a great capture for Amity. And that's just a very good part of the map to have. As once you hold a town, it's pretty easy to defend. As this is open fields between you and them. You can place some AT guns over here. You know, get some guys in the buildings here. And you're, you're good to go. You're Gucci. You know, use Panzer free is going to be very tough to deal with. You do have a 6 pound of being brought in to retaliate. And the Panzer free in the middle. Going to be killing you know, Humber. Now the Panzer three here going to be engaging the rifles a bit. And we do have the Cromwell Mark Seven, which is going to be a very tough customer for the Panzer three to deal with, as the Panzer three can't effectively pen it at max range. Even though the Cromwell doesn't have the veterancy, that armor definitely makes up for it. And it's almost like having it's almost like having a tiger in a face when you get the Cromwell in a, in a silly array because it was just it's just not much that can penetrate you. You're like a heavy tank, un unless you engage at rather close range and get penetrated like that. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, our Panzer III does have the veteran. She definitely deserved the kill here. And, of course, that's one of the downsides of, really, <laughs> the guard armored division. Is that you just don't have much veteran. She one-on-one -on -one tank fights. Against, you know, Axis veteran tankers, you know, you're just not going to have a good time. It's all about suppression and ambush in these tanks, like with the six pounder, for example, to try and deal with the Panther 3. Oh, the six pounder did bounce, which is a bit ironic. Or a bit unfortunate, I really say, not really ironic. But it's true, it's over here. Going to be keeping that 2 3 Fort Bane, another Panther 3 being brought in as well. And Turgon makes some very good progress in the middle. A nice breakthrough here. He doesn't have the means to fully exploit it. I mean, he could easily just move the Panther free up here and get quite a bit of land, but not enough to really hold. And on the right-hand side, we got the Six Pounder, which is really the only thing stopping this Order Free from really moving up. And that Order Free has, hasn't even moved since the start of the match. And the two, three, four over here, going to be trying to get an angle on that Six Pounder. The six pounder is going to get a pretty good amber shot. And now he's pretty, he's pretty much going to force that two free forces to surrender. I mean, you are firing from the move as well. Now yeah, that two three four is essentially buggered. He really he really sort of moved in like a spa troop or infantry unit instead of trying to go around. With a vehicle, if you think it's an AT gun, yeah. Well, left hand side, Amber T's still holding the town. He is still gonna fall into the trap, yeah. Well, he doesn't have any proper AT to or B phase to really deal with the Panzer Freeze. And from their position, they're just shooting into the town. And, well, okay, he does have the AEC, I forgot. That is the second sort of medium tank he can get. But he is range, he's just gonna fall to the same dilemma of losing it to a Panzer Free. He'd really want to try and position it around here to take advantage. Well, even then the AEC is going to get penetrated by the Panzer. He doesn't have that 11 armor. So it's just going to be down to getting a first shot. But yeah, you know, Amber T is very focused on the town. He's getting that slow plus one points advantage for the entirety of A phase. So it's doing him wrong for our getting a Stuart on the right hand side just for some sort of tank support. You know, it's not going to be great in its open field. We got another flam panzer being brought in to try and deal with this town. He only got one motorized rifle in here and no piat, so that's going to be pretty easy to just barrel on through. And Abati has, has started to run out of steam in A phase. He's getting heavily pushed back. Turgeon is on the offensive. He has the momentum. And, you know, he's just doing good. This is just good play from Turgeon in general. You now, using his fire support efficiently, using the Panzer Freeze in a more close range environment, which is how they work well. And just taking advantage of the veterancy bonus that he has compared to Abati. On the right hand side, he's definitely going to be taking advantage of the. Oh, he lost. He lost the mortar, huh? That's uh. That's not good. And it looks like the mortar is trying to retreat. Just definitely gave Amber T a bit of a break on this right hand side. That mortar was the main threat. Yeah. 
we see later on in the kill log where there's a spiritual six pounder. Pretty surprised how he got the kill here. But it definitely just relieves some tension until B phase. And we are now into B phase. So Ampertini, you know, you can get 17 pounders, you can get fireflies, you can get holy heavy arsenal. Turgon acts as the Ag Panzer Falls and Panzer Falls when it comes to tanks and also some more infantry. It was still not a lot. Amberty can just out infantry him still. And this town is not looking too great, but we do have a Firefly. If uh, if Amberty pre ordered the game, this would be a Firefly Harris, but uh, nonetheless, it's just a regular run star. No added track armor, unfortunately. But it's going to be a good counter against us. Panzer Freeze does have 11 armor, and it can outrange him. The problem is trying to get into that 1.2 kilometer range, as it's much more of a, you know, CQC Firefly. I got the Panzer Free here taking some shots. You know, it isn't going to be falling back, and if he loses that, no, he's not. It's going to fall back on its own accord. Is it? Come on. Yeah, it does fall back on its own accord. Yeah, got a dingo here. So not looking too good for Amberty really. He just he really spent a lot of his money on getting that Firefly. And considering the Panzer Freeze aren't gonna open up to really try and engage him. It's not gonna be that effective. See second Panzer Free falls back behind the buildings. Not rightfully so, not runs in the face of wrath of that seventeen pounder. And he doesn't have any right now he's bringing in the rifle spam to just try and attack the town. But at the same time, very heavy defenders. MG42s, Panzer Grenadiers, just just look at the stars. It's stars in the eyes over here. It doesn't have any artillery to soften it. His Firefly is the only fire support, and the Firefly isn't great at fire support as it only has two HE value. You have Firefly on the right hand side, which is going to be a good choice, as really the Fireflies in this area of map are just going to do great deals with the Panzer Free, easy peasy. And got the Act Panzer here, which is going to be a pretty even fight. Yo, if you get a side shot on the Axe Panzer, you, you do get some pretty good hits. I think that was, maybe that was a side shot, I'm not entirely sure. Nonetheless, getting a good ammo hit, yo. And he's, notes how he is bringing dingoes to cover his fireflies. It's a rough, rough 30 point investment just to give it an extra veterancy. You're going to be wanting to get as much veterancy as you can out of these fireflies, considering you don't have any veterancy to begin with. We've got Stuka coming in and gets a lovely kill. He doesn't have any Tempest or, you know, any AA, so of course he's going to lose out. So now maybe Amber is going to, you know, maybe get some Crusader AAs to cover his tanks. He's going to keep losing your Fireflies to Stukas like that. We've got a Command Sermon over here too, which is definitely going to be much needed fly support. And also, well, I'd say Command Support too, but we also have the Dingo. And a Dingo here, or the Firefly. Kills the Panzer Free easy peasy. Panzer Free, you know, fall and shot engagement, rightfully so. And the problem is for Turgeon is he can't poke his fire support out to deal with Amberty's fire support the tanks, as he's just going to lose. So the Panzer Grenadier is going to have to face head on against tanks, and the rifles are just yet to soak up damage and, you know, get the Panzer Grenadiers to shoot. So there's not there's not really much that, uh, that Turgeon can do on that matter. I mean, you could get a Panzer IV, but still, there's, there's two tanks here. And that Panzer III is wounded. So it's going to be a, a bit of a, a long battle. But he's eventually going to be able to capture his town. It's just going to be slowly about... It's just about slowly whistling down. The defenders. It's not like the actors where you can just rass in a flam panzer or you're like Canada or just ripping the Ross pool. So I'm sure the great CQC clearer. You, you just have to do it standard. You just go. We are just blowing them up to death with cannons. On the right hand side, he does lose the Firefly to the Yanked Panzer, which is you know, a pretty fair trade, I'd have to say. To be expected. But look, Amperty, you can get another Firefly. He's got three Firefly so far on B phase. Because as Garge Armoured, you can do that rather easily. Stuka being brought in, but he has a Tempest to meet him. Though there's also a two-star Messerschmitt to meet him too. And he, he sort of went for the Messerschmitt. 
Though he can still fight it efficiently, though he already lost quite a bit of uh, morale. And that Mazda Smith is going to come around just a Tempest is much faster. Will it be able to get Ray by speed? I don't entirely think so. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah, extra speed. It does have a uh, like 125 kilometer hour advantage over the Messerschmitt. So just barely saving the plane here. And that's what I love about Tempest. Just, they're so fast. While also retaining their agility and firepower. We've got a mobile rack on the left hand side to keep any Tempest to base. Also good fire support. Bully axis. On our hold up in the town, I mean the Shermans are slow, the, Sher the Sherman is slowly battering away at the Panzer Grenadiers and the rifles. They're just there to get the Panzer Grenadiers to shoot at them to spot him essentially. You're in the middle, you know, Turgan finally making a push through down here a little bit late. I mean, you should have really thought about doing something here sooner because... You know, he's, he's, he's been seeing these spikes on the map, and he's getting a very nice plus two point advantage. He's catching up to Amity rather quickly. And he's bringing in this Stuka around to try and get this Firefly. Does he have eyes on? No, he does not, as the Firefly does move behind cover. So that Stuka is going to be pretty useless. And on the left hand side here, our Pounder Grand is. Slowly holding on. We've got more rifles just to be thrown into the fray. Tempest comes in. Shoots down the Stuka easy peasy. We've got a Messerschmitt. And, yeah, the Messerschmitt already got some good morale damage on. And the Veteran Sheet does help out too. They both have the same turn radius. No, no, no. The only has good turn radius of Tempest. My bad. And there's a mobile rank in here. I think the Messerschmitt is definitely going to kill that Tempest. Yeah. I think now would be a time for um, T to get an AA unit or two. Not to keep Ray Stukas, but also just to help him with dogfights to get now at Messerschmitt. Because he doesn't have any two-star Tempests in his deck. It's going to be rather deadly going one-on-one -on -one with a Messerschmitt 109. And still just slowly trying to rattle rate the town. The rifles being brought in. But now we're in C phase. Pretty, nothing too crazy economic rise. B phase is really the big gap difference, 125 to 100. But Turgan, he can get Achilles, he can get more fireflies, more rifles, it's just more of the same. Well, Turgan, the main thing Turgan can get now is a Panther and Panther Chiefs, which are rather scary. Rich do have one star veteran sheet too. So, uh, Panthers are going to be rather tough to deal with one on one for Amber T. Once again, it's all about using fire support to suppress them so your lowly fire, your lowly fatted fireflies can deal with them. Look, he's moving the Shermans and fireflies around the flank here. A little bit risky. I mean, it could have been a Panda Strike or an AT gun here. Fortunately, it's not ill. Bringing in the rifles to screen the raid. It is a 2 3 4, but that's not much of a threat for a Sherman. But it's just a slowly written, just slowly getting the pattern going to If he had a half track, he could have just rushed down here and forced all of these guys to surrender. But it's just going to be the slow infantry trot. He does spot the 234, going to be throwing grenades at close range. Probably, yeah, not going to get the kill here. Because it's just, right, it's just regular grenades, not even TNT charges. And his Flampanzer is in position. I mean, he could get some good Albert Scotch here. As these rifles come around the corner. And... Hello, yeah. Flame on. Flame on. And the rifles don't have the AT, so they can do bugger all. And that's really good placement of the Flampanzer here. Completely killing all of those units. The yeah, other does go down to the Firefly and Sherman. Which was pretty good flanking maneuver, yeah. You know, but he, he just has the tanks. He has three tanks compared to no tanks. Yeah, Turgan has. So Turgan does have that Panther G, which is scary. Absolutely scary to deal with. He does have one Firefly. And with the Dingo, he does have a Veteran G star over the Panther. But still, you, you want to have a little bit more on the out. Right hand side pretty much is. There's, there's nothing here to stop it. That Firefly going to be 
hope in the open field here. He doesn't have much to really attack with either. So he's just going to be gaining that nice plus two point advantage. While just holding on to the middle of the Stuart. And more rifles coming in to try and lodge out the defenders. The Panda Grenadiers badly beaten, but they're, they're still in that town. And they still have two MG42s. We got another Panther from Tiger as well. So going heavy on the Panther play. And here we have the Typhoon AT. And so we have a Panther here, Typhoon AT. This is what two-star veteran she can do. Goes in for the rocket run. And completely stuns up the Panther in run, rocket, run. This is where you take two-star Typhoon ATs. And that's completely going to negate the Panther. Brings in a Tempest to cover if he has no AA on the field. So, uh... He might lose a second Tempest. No, he's still trying to dogfight here. The Sherman's the only AA. It's 150 cal. Which isn't exactly a, a good amount. And that he is actually having a hard time trying to shoot that Mr. Smith. But it's just a dogfight. I mean, a Crusader AA definitely would have helped out. But both sides are just turning. It's like a very boring dance. Nope. That's anticlimactic. Looking back at the town, uh, the rifles are trying to move in, but they just can't really do much against his pan grenadiers, also his auto cannons back here. It's going to have to wait for the Shermans to come up to uh, do any damage. That's what I mean. Infantry aren't that great. They can't do much by themselves. You need to have tanks supporting them and fire support you know, nearby to do bloody anything. And he's bringing in more Shermans. But it's also risky to bring in the Shermans into this town. As Panzer Grenadiers can easily just Panzer Faust gem. The Panther G in the middle is uh, going to be annoying. Dealing with the MMG carrier. Fireflies all the way over here. So you can't really deal with the Panther over here. And the Panther G... Not going to be one to engage that Firefly. I mean, it does have a slight advantage, just armor and AP rise compared to the Fireflies. But still, you know, you don't want to be risking that, especially on that Pound for G. You can't get many of them at all for Turgon. And 280 points is a rather expensive unit to lose. If you did have a Stuka, that'd be a pretty good chance to use, pretty good time to use it. But Panther G is going to try and go for that Firefly that is moving. The Firefly going to be moving behind a bush. A rather big bush, you could say. It's almost like a little forest. And that ends us mate, just keeping the skies clear. Even though Turgon does have, you know, big heavy tanks, he doesn't have enough of them to really make anything happen. You can't just move them in by themselves. I mean, that Typhoon AT could just come in and completely blap it. And really, you know, at this point, if we're in town, you do just run out of steam. Jean-Baptiste is slowly beaten back. You know, the Panda Grenadiers, you know, getting pinned down. One gets killed. And this is a very good manoeuvre on this right, left-hand side here. As it's going to cut off the reinforcement point here. You know, we do have an anti-tank gun being brought in. And it is the big-ass Pack 43 which is going to put a rather big-ass hole in that Firefly. But one Panda Grenadier out of MG ammo. He's pretty much inefficient, but it's 2 3 2. It's holding back the rifles as the rifles can't do anything against it. And the sermon is just a bit too far away. And that 88 is going to be setting up, and he's going to not have a clear shot. And that tree line is blocking his view, so he's going to be forced to relocate. He was going to be shooting a dingo, and that's a little amber T if he was paying attention. That, yeah, here's an 88. About to crawl up on your big tank. And there goes the rather big tank. Main thing, you know, Tugan, he has these heavy tanks and he's not really getting his value for him. He finally gets a Panzer Rafa, which is... He really should have got run an A-phase to help fight in that town. But, you know, better late than never. Finally bringing in the rifles, got some more Panzer Grenadiers, and they're going to get in close with that Sherman. And 
And they're not going to be able to Panzer Faust it, which is a bit of a shame. And the rifles, close range SMGs, and outnumbering the Panzer Grenadiers, aren't going to be able to beat them in a fight and get us a surrender. It's 2 3 2. Still can't do much about it, even though it's just down to machine guns. Typhoon AT, as you just saw, yeah, got a kill on the Panther. It's just right to eat the two star Typhoon AT. As even if you don't do that micro trick, you can kill a tank like that in two rocket runs. And considering, you know, that, that's pretty good, pretty good use. They do have the cruiser shader AA now, gonna be forcing down the Messerschmitt. Tempest is going to chase after it, get the kill, and now he can easily go for himself a Messerschmitt and shoot it down as the Crusader AA is going to get some very good hits. Yo, not enough to guess. Oh, he's going to get the surrender. All of them, all the full back, and that Tempest can easily just chase down the Messerschmitt. And there goes both of Turgon's two star fighters. Not good. And also losing the Panthea, that really pretty much kicked the shit out of Turgon's force and really his chance of making any push. But the main thing is, you've seen throughout this match, Albert, he's making good use of fire support. I mean, he's still getting his crap kicked out in the town just due to panda grenadiers. And uh, it's just really where I'd say you take motorized rifles. It's just, even if you had a lot of half tracks, and if the half tracks were dying to Panzerfaust, it's just much better for town fighting, extra fire support, getting surrenders on the panda grenadiers quickly. But it's just, you know, the rifle spamming. Is what he's doing. Got some auto cannon half tracks being brought in. And the Sherman is not going to be in position, and the rifles can't defend against him, so they're just going to get killed. Right hand side, the Firefly, uh, point blank in the spa troop. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't wanna be at spa troop. You see, the Firefly isn't exactly great when it comes to infantry fire support. And we do have a recon plane from Turgon. Going to be trying to spot out Firefly, and I wouldn't be surprised if we are sort of Stuka, but I wouldn't bring up a Stuka if there's a Tempest flying about, and he does lose a recon plane. Got a Hummel on the right hand side, which is a heavy piece of kit for trying to, you know, de root out Firefly. But at this point, Ambity, he has a huge point advantage, you know, just managing to neutralize the middle area and just, you know, having not even that much in terms of forces, but just having units, yeah. Just for the land grab, it's good. And even though it's been very back and forth in the town, for the most part, he has done a pretty good job of containing it and forcing Turgon's like entire perspective on this town instead of the more lucrative middle and right hand areas, which is really you want to be playing and so you want to be trying to go for those areas, especially if you're a tank division. But nonetheless, Albert he gets the victory of only a 500 kill difference. And I want to take a look at the history of our see how that Mortar 3 died. It died to 86 pounder. So, yeah, here we go. In terms of kills, uh, the Firefly, the one star, one or two stars in this case, do a lot of heavy lifting there, killed the Panzer Freeze and all the vehicles in that town initially. And see the Fireflies and some of the Shermans are really the heavy hitters, and of course the Typhoon AT killing that Panther T. Get the two star Typhoon AT, I can't stress that enough. But, um, yeah, nothing, nothing really too crazy, apart from the out kills, right? Lost Rises, he lost a lot early on to two-star Panzergrens, because he didn't have the fire support nearby, and to the Panzer Freeze, which were in fantastic position to, you know, kill the tanks and, you know, the veteran sheet that the Panzer Freeze have, and compared to, like, other German divisions that have high veteran sheet tanks, can make a rather tough customer, even if the tank is a bit more out of date. But apart from that, nothing really too crazy. You know, Pound Grenade is getting a lot of rifle kills, but rifles are pretty much cheap as chips. Pack 43 did really well, surprisingly. And it would have been much more easier for Amity to deal with his Pack 43 if he had a section on the field. So, throughout that match, there wasn't really much reason to get a section. I still think it's a good idea to get a section just for suppression, you know, infantry, whatnot. He wasn't really doing that much AT guns at all in that match, but still. A section would have been a good counter against the pack 43. So yeah, overall, uh, guard Jarman, you want to suppress your shit out of the enemy so you can rush in and use your rush veterancy unit to either surrender or kill stuff. Pretty simple. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. And as usual, please just take it easy.